So the absolute value of x has a vertex at the origin, and both sides, well, the right side has a slope of positive 1, and the left side has a slope of negative 1. Uh, or you could plot specific points, whatever method you want to use. So my lines look really bad. Okay. Um, so that's the graph. The axis of symmetry is x equals 0. <clears throat> um, because it is the y-axis, is the axis of symmetry. It looked like most people got that the left side is the line y equals negative x. The right side is y equals positive x. So if we write this as a piecewise function, this is what it should look like. Um, negative x when x is less than 0. Technically, the order doesn't matter. Um, whether you put that piece first or the second piece first, I just always do left side first and then right side. That's the way that I handle it. Uh, now, in this case, it does not matter which of those inequalities gets the equal to because the absolute value of x is a continuous function. They meet at the point where they change. They have the exact same value, so that's why it doesn't matter which one has the equal to. Um, so you could put it on the first one. I always, for whatever reason, put it on the second one. It really does not matter. And what I was saying before is it doesn't matter if you have this whole piece first and this whole piece second, uh, just so that the inequality matches with the correct equation. Anyways, I think it's best to do left to right. So I do left first and then the right one. Okay, so let's apply this to uh, the absolute value of x minus 3. Now, some of you may know where that is, uh, but let's remind ourselves where the absolute value is on the calculator. In case you didn't know, when you go to your y equals, let me clear out what I have from first period here. Um, <clears throat> you can't just put parentheses and the calculator know that you're talking about the absolute value. So math is the button under alpha, the green alpha button. You go over to the second category, num stands for number, and that very first option there, abs, is the absolute value. Now x minus 3 is inside the absolute value, so x minus 3 goes in parentheses there. Okay, so when we graph that, we can see on the graph, or we can look at the table, and we can see that the vertex is now at 3, 0, and 0, 3 is our y-intercept. And the slope has not changed. It still has a slope of negative 1 and positive 1. So this is what our graph looks like. So same basic shape, just shifted over. Uh, now, we haven't talked a whole lot about shifting and translating functions, but you should have a little bit of experience with, uh, with this in previous classes. Um, whenever there's a constant being added or subtracted inside the function, like in this case, <coughs> minus 3 inside the absolute value, it's going to move your function left and right. Okay, so we started absolute value of x was at the origin. So minus 3 is actually the opposite of what we expect. It moves it right 3 units. Um, so if it were plus 3, then our vertex would be at negative 3, 0. Okay, right 3 units, that minus 3 shifts it right 3 units. That's just kind of a side note. Okay, so uh, where's our axis of symmetry on this one? x equals positive 3. So is there something in the equation that would tip us off? Okay, uh, the y-intercept, yes, is related. Okay, um, but that not, might not always be the case. How about that whole shifting thing? Okay, uh, to find the axis of symmetry, you took what's inside the absolute value and you set it equal to zero and solve for x. So in this case, x minus three was inside the absolute value. We set that equal to zero and we solve for x by adding three to both sides. 
So x equals 3 is our axis of symmetry. That's going to be the number that follows the inequality. All right, so looking at our graph again, looking back at the graph, what is the equation for the left side of this function? What's the slope of the left side? Anybody? Negative 1. Okay, so negative x, what's the y-intercept? of the left side, plus 3. Okay, so the equation for the left side of the graph would be y equals negative x plus 3. How about for the right side? What's the slope? Positive x, okay, or excuse me, plus 1 is the slope, so it would be positive x. What would the y-intercept be if the right side of this graph extended to go through the y-axis? Negative 3. So we've got y equals positive x minus 3. So our piecewise function looks like this. We've got negative x plus 3 when x is less than 3 and positive x minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 3. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine very rarely look this, look this good. Apparently, I'm just having a good bracket drawing day. So it usually looks awful. Um, okay, so when you flip your paper over, you will see the steps for writing the piecewise function or equation of an absolute value function. Um, so we've already gone through this. Uh, the first part to find where the function changes or the number that goes with the inequality, you set what's inside the absolute value equal to zero and you solve for x. Okay? So then to figure out the other pieces, you don't always have to draw the graph and figure out the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, this works every single time. What you're going to do is you're going to change all the signs inside your absolute value. You're going to drop the absolute value bars or sometimes we need to change them to parentheses or we need to distribute something. And then we're going to combine like terms, if ap applicable, it's not always applicable, um, to combine like terms. Uh, that's always going to be your first equation. This is the way I always do it. I change the signs, that's the first one, and it's less than. Okay, the second equation, we're just going to drop the absolute value bars and combine like terms, if possible. That's going to be the second equation, and it's always x is greater than or equal to. Okay, so let's do some without even graphing them. Okay, let's just look at their equations and go from there. So first step, I take what's inside the absolute value, I set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So in this case, x equals 1 is where we're going to change. Uh, now, I don't have any terms that are going to end up combining, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to setting this up in piecewise form. So I change all the signs, negative x plus 1, and that's when x is less than 1. The 1 comes from uh, solving that equation there. And then for the second one, everything stays the same. x is greater than or equal to 1. It really is the straightforward and simple. Keep the steps in order and you'll be fine. Okay? Uh, let's do b. 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3. So just what's inside the absolute value, we don't worry about anything else outside of it. X plus 3 is equal to 0, subtract 3 from both sides, so x equals negative 3. Now, because there is something outside the absolute value, I'm going to take an intermediate step right here to show my work for how I end up with my absolute value equation, or my piecewise function. Okay? So, uh, we change all the signs inside of the absolute value bars. We drop the absolute value bars or they change to parentheses. They need to be parentheses here because we've got to distribute that too. Um, so it was x plus 3, so it's negative x minus 3. So when we distribute, that's negative 2x minus 6. And I'll go ahead and do the other piece at the same time. Absolute value bars change into parentheses, so that's 2x plus 6. So in both of these cases, 
our linear equations for the piecewise function have just been the exact opposite of each other. But that may not always be the case. So on, on A and B, they were just the exact opposite of each other. Same numbers, just opposite signs. Let's look and see if that changes with example C. So x minus 2 equal to 0. So our function is going to change at positive 2. Now some of this you can get to the point where you don't really have to show that much work and stuff. Um, but I'm just doing it so that when you look back at your notes we know where all this stuff came from. Okay. So first equation, we change all the signs. I don't know what it's read. Change all the signs of what's inside the absolute value. I'm not going to worry about parentheses here because there's nothing to distribute. The minus 1 is just there on the end. So it's negative x plus 2 minus 1, so that simplifies to negative x plus 1. For the second one, nothing changes. We're just going to combine like terms, and we get x minus 3. So it turns out if there's a constant outside of the absolute value bars, our functions will not be exactly opposite of one another. The slopes will be negative x, positive x, but the y-intercepts may be different. Okay. So we get d, adding a little bit more to it. We've got that constant, and there's a minus sign in front of the absolute value. So let's set x plus 1 equal to 0. So that means x equals negative 1 is where our function is going to change. Now, we've got to be careful with this because that negative right there is kind of like there being a negative 1 in front. So we do need to keep our parentheses when we change the signs of the x plus 1 to negative x minus 1. <coughs> So distribute that negative 1, that gives us 3 plus x plus 1, which is x plus 4. And we just change the absolute value to parentheses, so that's 3 minus x minus 1, which is negative x plus 2. Now, after I write this as a piecewise function, I'm a little concerned just because of distributing that negative and having to change stuff. I want to check this. So here's how we're going to check this in our calculator. What we need to do is we need to type in the original absolute value equation to y1. So 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 1. And then I'm going to type in those linear equations. Each of them gets their own line, x plus 4 and negative x plus 2. So when I graph it, the first thing it graphs is the absolute value function. And then all of a sudden this line starts extending out of it, and then a line connects to it. That means you did it correctly. Okay, that means that you wrote those piecewise functions correctly. Now let me show you, say maybe you forgot your parentheses uh, on this last part. You just dropped the absolute value bars, so you got negative x plus 4 instead of negative x plus 2. Here's what it'll look like if you do part of it wrong. Okay, that part's good. That part is not, because it doesn't fall directly on the absolute value function. We get this extra piece in it. So it lets you know not necessarily what you did wrong, but there is something wrong with your second equation. And you know it's the second one because that was the one that showed up second. That makes sense. Okay, let's look at one more and then I'm going to let you practice with these. f of x is equal to the absolute value of 2x minus 5. 2x is equal to 0. Be careful with this. 
Usually we're adding and subtracting something, but here to solve for x, we need to divide. So this one changes at x equals 0.